Hi guys, it's Sebastian here from Nova Frugal Studio, and this video is going to be all about making scenes for your animations. Now, as you guys can see, my opening looks a little bit different. It's because I'm using the brand new version of OTX, or as you, um, as known to other people, Open Tunes Experimental. So please uh, go to the link in the description and um, donate something so you can acquire this beautiful piece of software. They added a lot of new things that are just phenomenal. These people, they're always... Always just, always good stuff from them. I really, um, as a lot of you know, I really do um, believe in in Open Tunes. I just, I just, it's a, a real opportunity for me and a lot of animators out there. And they, and these guys always do such a great job in making just some incredible things. And so, what you guys have in this version of Open Tunes, I believe, is let me create a quick raster layer before we get into um, what we're doing today. Uh, a new level, I believe. If I create a raster layer, we have the my paint brushes. I believe could be wrong. Um, raster vector, let me do raster. I think the brushes might be in here, that's why it's going to take a little while to load up. But yes, they yes, they have all the my paint brushes in here for um painting, you know, backgrounds and open tunes. And I think that's um, well, not just backgrounds, you can use them for animation too. However, in my case, they haven't worked out super well because of my system not being the best. So, but there's that. And then you also have the X sheet and the timeline um, to your choosing. So, and honestly, I think that these versions of Tunes actually are a little bit more stable than the um, uh, release version on the official website because I actually had to revert to one of these when this file got too big. Now, before we get into the lesson about creating scenes, I'm going to show you guys what I got so far. <clears throat> So pie, <laughs> just doing his normal sneak on thing. Um, I probably should have played this before, so the um, latency isn't too bad. So as you guys can see here, I did make up a lot of scenes to make this little sequence. So you, as you can see, Pi slips on a fish, and then he falls, and then the chef almost sees him, so he flips over, and then he climbs up, and the chef turns around after. Um, now, nah, so I composing all these scenes was. Like especially what I mean by scenes is stuff like this. When you, how do you know uh, where to put the camera in all of your scenes? Like right here, how do I, how do how do you know to put the camera under Pi? And so, really, um, making scenes has to be um, man. It's not really the easiest to explain. But um, unlike my other videos, I decided not to write something down for this, um, so as to not give you. A clear-cut formula on how to make scenes because there really is none. So let me edit this frame. Um, and I'm gonna give you some something that I learned while making scenes. Um, if you guys like to draw comics, which I used to, um, making scenes shouldn't be so difficult for you. Um, but the main thing you want to ask yourself is what do you want the audience to see at that particular moment, and that will decide what is in your scene. Just a little animation scene, like how did I decide to make this fish? flop right here in the front of the camera as the guy was walking away and so <clears throat> it's not like a skill you have to acquire it really almost becomes as a sense once you understand it and so um i'm going to show you i'm going to go through all the scenes i made i'm going to show you guys what my thought process sort of was so for right where can we go we can go right about here and i want the audience to see pie dangling in the background struggling to get on his feet and so I make the f the foreground which I talked about in another video this guy I made him all gray because he's the foreground and you're not supposed to really be paying attention to him I made him gray so he's you're not paying attention to him you just see pie and then once pie is done moving you see this guy look up like oh he might notice something and then pie is gonna you know audience is gonna look back at pie and he's gonna climb up and then the guy's gonna turn around after and this can be learned in the um and this is one of the animation principles called staging. I'll give you guys a video on that by Alan Becker. He does a really good job explaining it in the description because he um, does a really good job explaining how what, what staging is and how to use it. But scenes are a little bit different from... Um, actually, no, they're, they're exactly what staging is. So I established what I wanted the audience to see. Right now, I want the audience to see that Pi is looking at something else. So he kind of wipes his head out, the sweat off his head because he's not scared anymore and he looks over again. And then we want to see what Pi sees. So we kind of get a close-up on Pi. Pi is the foreground right now. And we see the, the chef walking 
down. So we want to basically establish to the audience the easiest way to follow what is happening. So once you get the hang of it, it's really not too difficult. So what I wanted the audience to see is Pi's devious face and then he pushes a fish over. Um, and so I made everything else, you know, static, not really moving. No um, guys jumping in the background to catch the audience's attention. And um, I uh, also used one of those rule of thirds graphs. I don't have it here because I had to delete it. Um, it glitched out um, with the other version of OpenTunes. It was not pretty. Um, and so even with this, you see him push over the fish. And then what I want the audience to see is this guy just walking away, you know, doing this sort of animation. Not very interesting. And then the fish splats. And then after it splats, you see him, oh, what? The fish splatted. And now to demonstrate what we're going, what I've just told you guys about making scenes, I want to make one with you. So um, let's do, start it right about here. And yeah, so um, otherwise, that's what's that's catching up on Castle Dark. Everything's going pretty good. So let me start. Now what I want in this scene is since we already seen him turn around, we want him to put down the plate because the, the merit of this, of Pi pushing over the fish, is because... Um, and if I open the other file, you would see that he's trying to get to the door, but he doesn't want to be seen. So what Pi is going to do is he's going to try to sneak into the dish and have and be taken out by the chef. And so what Pi is going to do, he's going to push over a fish until he gets distracted. And now we're going to draw the scene where the chef puts down the dish so Pi can climb in it. And so we're going to start with which layer? We're going to start with the chef, the layer of the chef. And he's going to be looking confused. So if you draw one of those rule of thirds things that I mentioned a second ago, it sort of looks something like this. Um, yeah, and then so what this means is that um, it's almost as if every well-composed picture has its main object in either on this side or this side. And it's not really a concrete rule. Um, you can look up more about that, um, but it really does help when composing scenes. So I recommend using something like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that as the background. So I'm going to draw one. And it's not really a perfect one. You can get one online. But um, for me, importing pictures in OpenTunes has just been a pain, so I just decided not to. Um, let me just do this and then do like this, something like that. And this is really bad, but it's going to do get the job done. I could have used a straight line tool, but I'm too lazy right now. So <laughs> um, we'll just go with this. And so we're going to put our main object, which is the chef looking right here. A little bit um, latency while I'm drawing, um, which is not preferred, but we're going to have to deal with it. Um, we're going to do like this. The chef looking, he's going to be surprised, so we're going to make his eyes all up like this. And maybe we'll put one down because he's confused, so maybe we'll do down and then up like that. He has no idea what's going on, so he's holding the plate, and he's confused. Let me draw the hat on him. Let's see. And so, yeah, we're putting him right where the audience can see him and can focus on his sort of, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say mental state, but that sounds slightly, slightly psychological. I'm not trying to, um, it's not like he's getting psyched out or anything, but we just want to know what he's thinking. So he sees this for the fish splat, and then we're going to have also in the background this table right here. Let me make this a bit, bit, bit bigger. There you go. This table right here. I don't know I'm not going to do the best drawings today, but the, really the point of this is just to show you guys how to compose scenes. Because I found this very difficult um, beginning when I wanted to draw comics um, and before I was exposed to animation. I found this very difficult to find out where to put everything. You know, it's kind of all messed in my head. And um, you really just got to find out what you want the audience to see, what's going to be the easiest for the audience to perceive. And so let me put this right here, and he's going to be holding it. And then so he's looking all confused at um, the fish dropping. And so then, I'm going to put that exposure for a little while. He's going to put the dish here. So let me draw the dish here before I draw him. Uh, and since this is a storyboard, it's okay if everything looks kind of strange. And strange it does look. <laughs> there we go. So he's facing this way now, and we're going to make his hat like this, and that, and that. And then, so, um, we'll just draw his body 
his, I'll just kind of two up his arms because I don't really, um, I'm just trying to establish the scene here. And then what we're going to do is he's just going to walk over to the side. There you go. He's just going to walk over. We'll just put the little arrows that he's moving this way. And uh, on the side right there. He's kind of like determined now that he's wants to find out what that noise was. So we'll give him a little uh, anger on his eyebrows. So that is, um, I know I drew a couple frames here, but this is mainly for the guy. But the thing is, I'm going to see if I can make this a little better, obviously, honestly, because this wasn't the best scene to make. Let's see. So we have him in our line right here. So he's good. I might want to make him a little bit bigger because we want the audience to focus on his reaction to Pi and also the fact that he left the the platter there. And so let's make him a bit bigger because it's not really about the things behind him. So make sure that we keep this consistent in all our drawings. Make the platter bigger too, why not? Make sure we turn on onion skin just to be sure. So we need to be a little bit bigger than this. So, yeah, so, um, not too difficult if you know what you're doing, but um, that it can be. So now that we have this, this is all fine and dandy looking, but it still looks a bit, you know, kind of boring. Now, when we had here, we had something called depth, where we could see what was in the background and what was what we had to focus on. As you see, you're focusing on his reaction because the fish stopped moving, and when you're making a scene, um, depth is probably the most important part because it engages your audience without even, they don't even know that they're engaged. When I look at a scene with depth, I feel like I'm there, that the, that the environment around my pen just fell and fell apart. I feel that the area around that the artist has established is actually 3D because you, if you have depth, then you've kind of caught the audience's attention that this place is real and quite frankly that it kind of matters because um, one thing with writing stories is that you want the audience to somewhat care about your characters um, as long as you do so the the environment kind of plays a role into that too um, if this is a 2d environment that's just completely flat it doesn't seem like any of this even matters you know um, that's not completely true but I'm just um, telling you guys like what this is what it, it seems like, um, you know, almost like on a subconscious level. You can feel that you're in an environment when it has depth in it. And um, I can't, I'm not the best teacher in art. So, and plus, since this is only the storyboard, it doesn't matter so much. But I just wanted to stress to you guys that I'm not, I'm not, even, an, I'm not even a professional artist. I'm very much an amateur. But to learning, learning how to draw is going to help your animation tenfold. I know I see a lot of videos saying like, oh, do you need to be able to draw to do animation? I'm not gonna say you need to, because I, <laughs> quite frankly, I can't really say because I don't know um, everything about drawing. So, um, but I will say that it does help. Um, the skills that I have um, have helped me in the course of animation to, uh, you know, just, get through the little obstacles. I feel as though if you don't um, do drawing, I'm not going to say first because there's really no order of these things, but, you know, if you don't do drawing at all, then it's going to be very hard to animate because it's based off of moving drawings. You got to know how things move and um, how, how to form them. So, um, really, those are the, really the three things you got to remember about animating a scene. Um, what is it that you want your audience to see? Um, conveying depth, and I think I think that I think that's only two things that I went over, right? Yeah, there might be a third thing, but I completely forgot about it. But anyway, that's it for me, guys. I just wanted to share that little thing with you. Decided to go off the tongue today, you know, a little bit of rambling in there. So um, please do support these people who make OTX or o uh, Open Tunes Experimental because they're wonderful people. They always ha have our backs in this. Um, struggle to make Obertune somewhat relevant in the animation world. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.